What's going on you guys? My name is Ben Can, and today I thought we'd do a little video on an update on my car. There's been a lot of things I've done over the past year like suspension and brakes and a lot of people have been asking me how has everything been going? So let's get into it. So about a year ago I did one of the biggest things to this car and it was the Alden American suspension, the coilovers in the front and the regular shocks in the back. And I have to say this thing handles and it's not just because of the suspension of the coilovers and such, it's the Shelby drop and the new radial tires. This thing handles really well compared to what it was before. Like, it's fun. What it's limited by now is the tires. You could feel the traction. These are pretty skinny tires, you know what I mean? Like the wheels are only seven inches wide, but it does its job. You can push it and you could have fun. My favorite thing about switching to coilovers is that they're adjustable in the stiffness and in its height. It was awesome to dial in the height of this car just by adjusting it. Like with regular shocks, you can't really do that. You have to do a bunch of other ways to get it to how you want it to sit. But the stiffness, I have it on a pretty low setting and it's still pretty stiff, which isn't a problem to me because I'm just holding on to the steering wheel and I'm planted but when I was driving uh, Victor Hansen the kid with the Pontiac in uh, Denmark we went out to the canyons and I was driving and he was hitting his head on the roof liner on this car it was pretty funny but for me it's fun and it's a really cool idea that you could go to the track or whatever and then change your suspension setting make it more stiffer and tune it in how you like but for around the streets the low setting is pretty fine when you see a bump you have to go pretty slow it it, it hits bumps and you feel so I kind of talked about how I did the Shelby drop on this car and I recommend it to anyone with a Mustang. It changes the car, it feels really good, it handles great. It's a really cheap and easy thing to do to the car, so if you have a Mustang, do it. So another thing that I did to this car that was pretty big was switching over to the Willwood four piston brakes up front and then their master cylinder. And for the most part, it's been really nice. The only thing that has been an issue, which I fixed, we'll talk about that, was the pedal feel. So when I was doing the job, I did it really fast. I was rushing with school and filming and I just wanted to get it done because I was starting my semester and I didn't measure the push rod correctly. I just half-assed it, eyed it, and it didn't come out too well. Like the pedal you'd push in and just like this much, and then it would engage and you know, that's not what you want. It's not a good feel. So what I did right when I finished my last semester, I bought a specific gauge for the push rod length. And what I discovered was that the original push rod, the way I had it was too short. So it moved in and then it engaged. So basically I had to rig this whole thing. I used like this little bullet that Willwood provided and I hollowed it out and I sticked in the push rod that came with my booster and I measured it out, got enough clearance and made it perfect, which I'm, that's the way you should do everything. Make sure you do it right so you don't have to fix it later on. So now the pedal feels really nice. I'm happy with how it turned out and I put in the new proportioning valve that Willwood provided me. So as far as the brake system, it's done all correctly, but now is a tough part. The proportion valve is still a little wonky. I haven't figured it out correctly. And I think there's still a little bit of air in the line, so I'll probably have to bleed the brakes soon, but I'm pretty happy with the job and you just have to fine tune it. So kind of a short, small review on the Willwood brakes. I'm pretty happy with them. The brake fade is, is not really a thing with these brakes. Of course, you know, I haven't pushed it that crazy, but I went on a canyon run that required a lot of braking, and these brakes did not fade that much. It was consistently braking hard. However, with my old brakes, they were shot after a while. So these things get rid of heat pretty well. So that's the main thing that was going for these brakes that I could compare to with my old brakes. So I'd recommend these brakes if you're running drum brakes up front, this would be a huge change. I think it would be really good. And the components of Willwood, they're all made really nice. And that's like, I could, I really appreciate craftsmanship and how a product is made. So about a couple months ago, this car was actually hit. It was on a movie set. And that was kind of a whole little ordeal. Something hit my uh, passenger fender lip and messed up this whole side. It wasn't like hit hard, probably just got like bumped into something. But if you looked at it, it was messed up. And if you drove it, it would rub. The fender would totally like hit into the tire and it was all messed up. So thankfully my friend Dennis, his shop took care of it and they actually rolled out the fenders pretty nicely. Now there's actually good clearance. It doesn't really rub at all, which is pretty crazy. The space in between the tire and the fender was only about a credit card length and width and it was freaking low and it would rub. So the shop actually took care of some metal work on the driver's side fender too. My dad and I, we messed up the fender when we were rolling it. We were like using like a ply or something and destroyed the metal, but they cleaned it up. Looks nice. So in the end, it kind of worked out. But what I really noticed was when I took it out to the canyons, I was like, whoa, this thing handles way better. I think the tire would rub on the fender very slightly and that would kind of like drag. So the steering wasn't that good. But now it's like, this thing turns amazing in the canyons. It's, it's really impressive. 
So if you guys don't already know, I kind of did a little video, but my primary lens is still messed up and that's what's been hindering my video production stuff. So since I haven't really had a lens to film with, I've had a lot of time to work on this car. With all this extra time, I was able to work on a bunch of little things. One of them being my driver's side door, the paint bubbled all crazy on it and it just looked gross and this happened a couple years ago and I never really wanted to fix it. So I kept sanding and sanding it down and I would put primer on it and it would react. It's really annoying. So then I used a paint remover and I stripped the door off but now that door matches the rest of the body. So now the paint looks pretty good on this car. Not like nice but it matches all so that's what I mean when it's nice. So the last thing that's been done to this car was a, a head gasket blue on my driver's side. So I was like oh I have to fix that. At least that's the easiest thing to fix, right? But then I had some like really gross valve covers that the previous owner put on, and the previous owner also put some like quick release bolts on it that I just I'm not a fan. It's like this is my race car, but it's not full blown race car, so it's kind of funny that that was on it. And I just wanted to put some simple bolts on it. So what I did was I was like, okay, let's go look for some valve covers. So I wanted to put something old school on it. So I picked up some valve covers on offer up for like 40 bucks, some old school looking finned ones. And what I found out was, oh yeah, this engine's not stock. So the rockers would rub on it. So I was like, ah, I need to find some like tall versions of these valve covers. So then I kept looking and, and I was like, okay, I'm interested in some old Mickey Thompson valve covers. Those are pretty cool. And on eBay and stuff, they're all like 200 bucks. It's like, I didn't want to spend that much money. So on OfferUp, I found some and they were 40 bucks. They were pretty beat up. The previous owner like painted them purple. I spent a couple days stripping off the paint using paint remover and painted them black and they came out pretty sick. And they were still not tall enough for the rockers on this car. Shout out to Steve Beck. He hooked it up with some free spacers and those are pretty expensive. So I'm really thankful I got them for free and they look nice on this car. So thank you, Steve. So I'm really happy on how they turned out on this car. However, I finished the install yesterday and I just drove my car around the block. And what I noticed was that the gasket on the bottom was completely destroyed, but it just popped out and it's like half the thickness. So annoying. And then I've also did a little touch-ups on the engine bay. I was like, I need to get a new dipstick. So I just got a stock style one. So I'm pretty happy with how that looks. And then I got a new gasket in between the carburetor and the air filter. I've been doing a bunch of little small things and the car's been pretty nice, but now I need to fix the gaskets and tune the brakes in a little bit better with the proportioning valve. Another pretty crazy thing was Greaser Thoughts Garage came by and I gave him a little ride in the Mustang and decided to give him a little pull. So we're going down this pretty steep windy road and we're going downhill. So first gear I was ripping it and I shift in the second and I shift it and then I lay off and but the car is still going. So I'm like, oh my God, the throttle stuck. And it was weird, like the pedal just went down. Like it just went flat to the ground. I just cut the key and just coast it downhill. We looked under the hood and I didn't see anything wrong. And then William is like, oh, you're, you don't, your spring's gone. <laughs> so I guess the spring just came off and it was pretty sketchy. So what he did was he reconnected the spring to a new point and we drove it down to Pep Boys and we bought a kit. I didn't really know that you needed two springs. A lot of people don't talk about it, but supposedly for drag racing, it's recommended because <laughs> I guess people will crash that way just having one springs. So the Shelby drop, the new radial tires and the Alden suspension has made this car insane. Plus an alignment that was, that also helped out a lot, but I'm, I'm really happy with how this car handles. It just needs more power, but right now it's awesome and we'll keep driving it. Hopefully you guys like this video. I'll see you guys hopefully soon.